Hello everybody out there and the warm welcome here in, um, in the name of JFD as well and uh, my name Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski as always for those kind of webinars. Uh, also from my end, a warm welcome here today the 27th of February uh, 2018, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, at least the German time. So wherever wherever you uh, are, I don't know, uh, maybe different time zone, but um, everything is hopefully okay. <clears throat> and you can hear my voice and see my screen. Um, by the way, voice, uh, you may realize that for any reason, I don't know really, my voice is not perfectly okay. <clears throat> maybe I get a cold, I don't know, but I hope it will last at least uh, this uh, webinar. Anyhow, the title or the content for today's webinar is Candlestick Formations. Do they really work? And you see already that sounds a little bit skeptical. Um, and indeed, you will learn today that uh, not everything is as written in any textbook about uh, candlestick formations or candlestick patterns. Uh, honestly, I don't know <clears throat> exactly how to name them in English, um, to call them formations or pattern, maybe um, both is possible, but definitely you know what I mean. So I am a little bit skeptical and the results you will see <clears throat> um, will underline that, but nevertheless we can find and identify those kind of formations uh, which may generate a profit um, for specific underlyings and uh, which were not. So we will be able to derive a certain edge for a certain formation and um, that is exactly what I want to introduce here and you will learn how to do that by your own as well because um, it's all around uh, one Excel sheet which is already ready and prepared to go for any time frame, any underlying. Um, I will do everything today for Euro, US dollar on, um, on a daily chart, but um, let's see what else we can do out of that. So you see already my um, contact here, <clears throat> my email address, it's s.friedrichowski, really complicated last name, so just name me Stefan at jftbrokers.com. So if you are interested in later shown um, Excel sheets and those slides here, uh, no problem, I can send around um, those Excel sheets, um, but I need an email from you because I Unfortunately, I can only upload my slides here, um, which, by the way, you can download um, via the GoToWebinar control panel <clears throat> already right now, but I cannot upload any Excel or um, other kind of uh, document. Um, maybe there are uh, some virus uh, restrictions or anything like that. Okay. Having that all in mind, I think it's really time to start here, but as always, you see first uh, that slide here and that slide is a risk disclaimer because we talk about trading strategies and later you might, you might apply <clears throat> rules or thinkings or whatever you got out of that webinar, but finally you do it on your own and uh, that has to be mentioned at least once, but I think it's more or less self-explaining. Good. A little bit more about the real content. Of course, when we talk about candlestick formations, we need a short introduction to candlestick uh, formations at all. Uh, I will do it, it uh, for, for one chart and uh, just to introduce a few of them. Um, and immediately you will realize, okay, I have marked some in my chart, but what we really need is a mathematical definition of any candlestick formation. That's a little bit untypical because when you read textbooks, you will never find any um, mathematical definition. But if we really want to uh, derive any edge or maybe we just prove the opposite, that there is no edge, we need 
a mathematical definition of a certain candlestick formation. And of course, we need a methodology of how to measure finally that edge. So we need to decide, hey, first, does a current candlestick formation we have right now, does that uh, correlate or is it similar to anything uh, we find in the textbook and that we have to measure mathematically? Otherwise, we cannot uh, draw any real conclusions. We cannot just say, okay, look similar, fine, <laughs> let's take that one. No. Um, you know, that's not my style here, and that's not how I want to uh, dive into that topic. So we need a mathemat mathematical definition of a candlestick formation and a methodology to measure that edge. I will show how to do that, and then we go for the example on D1 for Euro US dollar with a couple of different uh, formations and you will see and learn how to manage that Excel sheet and how to do something like that by your own, uh, which is always the one I want um, to achieve during those webinars. It's not just <clears throat> say, okay, uh, go for morning stars, that's good, and do it. No, we need to know why and we really need all um, the information behind. Let's start with some formations. Um, you see that's a D1 chart of Euro US dollar. It's not a fresh one here. We are <coughs> at 1.38. Well, um, um, that's uh, 2014 or something like that. It's in about four months uh, period here. <coughs> and I have marked already um, five different formations. I start here on the left uh, with the so-called three black crows. Um, so that's um, that's a bird. Uh, those crows, crows. Um, you may know them. Uh, funny, funny birds. Yes, uh, they can do funny things as well. But you see what what's meant here. Uh, we have three red candles um, just in a row, and after that, at least for that statistical one experiment, the price went down further. Okay, of course, there's a question. Is that the typical behavior after three black crows, or better to say three a little bit longer short candles? Maybe that's, that's the typical behavior. And that's exactly the question we want to clarify here. Next pattern is the so-called Har Harami Plus. Um, more or less, there are several or similar patterns all more, um, go in the way uh, you have a short and then a long candle, uh, a little bit longer one, both. <clears throat> And ideally, they don't have uh, that much tail and button, um, but uh, that's the way, and that could be done vice versa as well. And uh, maybe the first one is a little bit shorter than the other one, <clears throat> then it's uh, called an engulfing. But anyhow, those kind of patterns might be reversal patterns, like in that example here. So you see, the short candle followed by a long candle, and then the price went further up. A perfect reversal. The next one, um, maybe not ideally perfect, but then the next one is once again ideal. Uh, and you see it goes really straight south, at least for the next two um, candles here. And finally, we have a formation out of three candles here. And um, that is called a so-called morning star. And uh, the opposite is simply the evening star. Uh, that is a three candle formation, <clears throat> meaning we have a longer short candle than a so-called doji candle, uh, an uncertainty candle with um, more or less vanishing candle body. And then followed <clears throat> by a long candle as well. And that's a reversal pattern as well at least uh, from the textbook. And in my case, or in that specific example here, it's exactly doing what it should do. If price goes further up, 
in the near future after the occurrence of that particular pattern. Okay, so you see, we have a couple of examples, but, hmm, and I named them here, or I labeled my, my uh, formations um, with those specific names. But the question is, that's um, not mathematical. So we need more. <clears throat> In order to, to do that, uh, purely mathematically driven and with a, some, some thresholds that we say, yes, this is um, a morning star and this is not a morning star. Something like that we definitely need. Okay. Generally speaking, those formations or patterns, they uh, might be bullish or bearish. So um, that is meant to, um, to indicate what comes next? What comes in the near future uh, after the occurrence of such a cap, uh, such a form formation? And those formation might consist out of one candle or just pure one uh, or two candles, three candles and even more. <clears throat> so um, you can have even five candle formations like that. And uh, I... Um, Mention here already two websites. Uh, let me quickly go through them because there you can learn a little bit more about those candlestick formations and specific patterns, just that you have seen those here as well. And uh, the one is um, just the Wikipedia, and <clears throat> it's uh, quite easy. You see, <clears throat> they start with uh, single patterns. Um, um, hammer, inverted hammer, like those one for uh, single candle formations, or even a little bit more complex one, bearish harami, bullish harami, and so on and so forth. And you see later one, which we uh, will investigate as well, well uh, those called three <coughs> white soldiers, um, that is the opposite of the one I mentioned already in my chart on the right hand here, the three black crows. And yeah, you see there are hundreds of those kind of formations uh, and you might even have more of them here on the website Candlesticker, um, which is dealing all around those candlestick formations and telling you what is the textbook opinion of what comes next. And of course, um, people who talk about candlestick formations, um, they it's sometimes a little bit nebulous what they and how they interpret uh, the patterns. And uh, later they they state, oh yeah, the candles previous or previous um, before the um, formation itself um, have to be taken into account as well. Everything is possible. I don't know exactly, but if we do it statistically, then we can get our answers by ourselves, and uh, then uh, it's exactly what we need in order to trade candlestick formations. Um, you find those um, web links already in the slides, so um, if you didn't get them right now, um, they are included in the slides, which you can download in the GoToWebinar control panel. Oh, there's already a question. Uh, that webinar is, of course, um, recorded, and you will find the recordings tomorrow uh, on the JFD YouTube channel. And that one you can find simply by pressing JFD uh, or typing JFD um, YouTube in Google. Then you are directly uh, linked to the JFD YouTube channel and you can find that, um, the recordings um, from tomorrow onwards. So uh, it might be needed to have it um, because later it will be a little get uh, it will be a little bit more complicated uh, with that Excel sheet. So maybe it's a good idea to, if you try it by your own, uh, to have the recordings <clears throat> as well. But you see, obvious we need a quantitative for a quantitative analysis. We need a better definition than just telling, oh, there's a red candle and a green candle, or a bullish candle and a bearish candle, and let's call them um, bullish engulfing or whatever. So, how to do that? My definition here is um, driven purely mathematically. So, if I talk about a 
sweet candle formation like the so-called evening star then we need three candles and I put some numbers for those three candles here in that table um, so the first candle um, has an open of 0.97 and a high of 1 a low of 0.97 and a close of 1 so that's exactly that white candle here. So, and that one is the first in the row of the three candle formation evening star. Of course, I might have um, changed that number here for 0 0.96, uh, of course possible, but I need to start with something. And you will see later, uh, what's more important is the mutual relationship between all those numbers, not the number itself. Um, that's uh, you will learn later <clears throat> because we measure the similarity between candle formations by um, the mathematical method correlation. But you see what I have done next. Uh, since I aim for forex, um, I don't um, have any any gap between the close and the open of the next candle. Uh, therefore, the first candle um, closed at one and the second candle opened at one as well and uh, later once again. Um, of course, uh, I know that in principle on uh, at weekend we might have gaps at Forex as well, uh, but normally they are not that big and um, all the other days we have more or less no gaps. Then you see the second candle which has a open and close at the same level and um, the high and low symmetrically um, around open and close and that creates that small doji here in the middle and then indeed the last candle is simply the opposite of the first one uh, so everything here is symmetric. So um, if you count the degrees of freedom, be, uh, how many numbers I might change here, it's not that huge. In order to mathematically mathematically describe that formation, evening star. You may ask, hmm, where did I get those numbers? Honestly, I did the following. I uh, looked into a textbook. Uh, like this one here and there I found a couple of uh, formations um, same labeled uh, like uh, on the web pages and what I did was indeed um, I have measured all the distances here in millimeters and um, took those numbers uh, for my my um, my patterns um, pattern examples here which um, I created. So uh, I need some starting point and that was quite simple but um, it worked. So, But anyhow you might change because later you will be enabled and learn that you can do any kind of pattern as a master pattern and look how um, that works uh, statistically with the historical data. So that's the way how we do the description of the master pattern, which we try to find in historical data, match with those, and then look how it went on after the occurrence of such a pattern. Okay, and exactly that is the next step. That is a methodology of um, how we do the, the, the how we do um, to derive the edge of such a pattern. So first we try to find the definition what cat patterns are similar. So we have a master pattern and then we look into the historical data and we need something which tells us in the number, hey, the current three candle for example pattern of of uh, interest is it similar to our master pattern yes or no yes or no and that therefore we need a number and that number will be simple the correlation and you might remember last uh, webinar about correlation and we do exactly the same but now with the 
numbers of our three candles and we correlate the test point with the master pattern and if we find a good correlation that means we have a number close to one then we say those patterns are similar you will see an example in a minute but the next step when we see okay that within our historical data there has been a, um, a pattern which is similar to our master pattern then we have a good thing uh, that we have a chance because in the history we can look how in future the price went on so we can simply look after the occurrence of a similar pattern of to our master pattern how the price went on and if we do it for several several hundreds of um, those similar patterns in the history we might find an edge whether the price typically went up or went down so both is possible of course and we don't care about the direction if we know the direction then um, we in the one case we open a long trade in the other case we would open a short trade that's easy so the good thing is that starting with our master pattern and finding um, similar formations in the historical data we can clearly derive what's typical behavior after the, the occurrence of such a pattern and that's exactly what we are interested in because then we know whether there is an edge or not that's all and practically <clears throat> we do this in the following excel sheet and let me start here um, already by, by telling you that excel sheet has uh, five sheets um, later you will realize there's one for three candle formations one for two candle formations and one for one candle formations then there is one excel sheet for the formations itself so i put already into one sheet all the investigated formations um, and the numbers how to describe them but before we go into those specific details let me start to introduce how i do the investigation of that similarity so first of all we have a master pattern here so uh, once again same numbers those numbers create or define our master pattern and that is shown in the middle graph here so white candle doji candle black candle going south and you will see if I change those numbers, the graph will change as well. But now I get a warning because, um, and the warning is telling me, hey, that can't be. Um, I have an open, uh, which is lower than the low, and therefore I get a warning. So if I change that number to 0.95 again, uh, you, you see now we have a new pattern. Um, and um, that is exactly shown here in the graph already. And what I do now is, the following let me click into that one here you see i do the same like in last uh, uh, within the last webinar about correlation so it's uh, the same formula it's a curl and you see there are two two uh, areas marked one is a current candle within the history from the 5th of january 2000 with the history the one candle one candle in the history two candles in the history so those three candles uh, are under investigation and now we measure the correlation to exactly our master pattern good what do we get here we get a number and as introduced already last time correlation is a number between minus one and plus one and the number close to one indicates a very good correlation meaning the patterns are similar and let me um, take those numbers for <clears throat> the current um, candle of uh, candle formation under investigation in the historical data i take those and i copy them here and then we get a graph for the for comparison here you see okay first candle is right it's a um, um, a long candle second nah, yeah. and third totally different so 
what does it mean here? We have a correlation of 0.6, just that you see an example of what does it mean. Um, so we compare the three days formation of the 5th of January 2000 with our master pattern, and we have a correlation of 0.6. And it looks like this one here. Let me take other data. Uh, let me go for one which is already marked in green here. Uh, you see the number. The number is 0.93, being the correlation between those three candles and our master um, pattern. And let's do it visual here once again uh, by copying this here. And you see, okay, that's not that bad. It's not exactly uh, our pattern, but maybe good enough. And um, what does it mean? Of course, we need a threshold. We need a threshold to define what patterns in the past we should name similar and which one not. And since the correlation is a number between minus one and plus one, uh, we just go for a threshold value. In this case here, it's 0.86. And let me change that threshold. And now look, please look to the sum here. Um, and that sum is the total number of similar patterns in the historical data. So if I change it, for example, to 0.9, you see, oh, I have only half the number of uh, similar patterns in my historical data. Since we have here uh, um, something about between four and 5,000 data, starting with um, the year of 2000. So what I always do here, I change that threshold to a value that I get around 200 similar patterns in the last 18 years. Um, to say, okay, now I have a little bit more statistics and I don't want to have a statistic uh, which is uh, um, yeah, um, not good enough. So, for example, um, if I go here for a number <clears throat> like 0.99, uh, you see I get um, not a single uh, correlation to my historical data, 0.98, now I get one. Um, can't tell where there is, but uh, you see, of course, uh, the lower the threshold, uh, the more <clears throat> candles I label similar. Um, and that was a reason to go here for 0.86. And you get a feeling about what does it mean, just visually, uh, like in that graph. And you can always change the master pattern here. And you can, can change just by copying uh, examples out of the history. And then you see uh, how good the correlation is or how bad. For example, this one has a correlation of about zero, uh, just to see it visually. OK. And of course, there is no correlation as seen visually. So we have done the first step. We can label within our historical data of 18 years those days which are similar to our master pattern. That's already the very good first step. But you see, within the Excel sheet, I have done something else. Let me go here for the first, uh, this one here, um, that uh, correlation which is good enough to say, OK, we have a good correlation with our historical data to the 24th of February 2000. What we do now is we ask the question, hey, how is the price going on after that specific pattern? And that is exactly done here within those next columns. And now you see what I have done as a calculation. Since I know at that point in time, at the end of the day of 24 February 2000, I know, OK, there's a perfect match or a nearly perfect match to my master pattern. And then I measure the percentage change or the change of the price, starting with the open of the next day's candle and comparing to the close of that candle, which is the change of the day after the occurrence of my 
master pattern. And that number you find here. The number next to the right is simply the same, but now for two days. So it it, is, it would be similar to opening a long trade at the open of the next day's candle and looking until the end of the second day, how much has the price been moved from that point, that starting point here. And we get that number as well. So after one day, after two days, after three days, and so on and so forth. Since all those numbers here are negative, it would mean, hey, the price finally over the next couple of days went south, which is indeed what is typically expected um, for such a candle formation. But that's once again statistic one. The good thing is we can simply sum all the results of after the occurrence of a similar pattern, how the price went on, we can sum that up and we can create something like an equity line for all the price changes after the occurrence of our master pattern. And that's exactly what I have done in those Excel sheets like this one here. But before going here, let me already introduce uh, the final one or this one here as well. And um, how that works. What I have done within that Excel sheet, I have put all the numbers of how to define a specific candlestick formation. And for example, going here to the right, you see evening star. Okay, let's go for the evening star. What do we have to do first? You take, if you take my numbers, then you would take exactly those numbers. And the following step is simply only in order to rearrange those numbers. So I copy those numbers and I insert them exactly here. And then you see, oh, yeah, exactly. That's our master pattern we have in mind, the evening star. And then you see how those have to be rearranged in a real candle sequence. And then I take those candles or those numbers here and I copy them here. But not copy direct, copy only the content, only the numbers, which means uh, that this is a paste uh, special, just putting the numbers here. And then I have those here. And you see, okay, that's exactly our master pattern. That's what we want to know. And now we change the threshold because we have only 32 examples like that one. Let me change the threshold to the number uh, we took before. Oh, that was not the right number. So now we are back here. And what you have else here within that Excel sheet is the summation of the price changes after, let's start with the blue line, blue line here, after one day, after two days, that's the red line, and so on and so forth. What does it mean? It would mean if we have an equity like that blue line, it's telling you that we don't have a statistical edge for that formation. Why can I draw that conclusion? So we have, within our historical data, we have 228 examples of such pattern. And then we have been adding up all the price changes after the occurrence of that pattern in the historical data. And if we would have opened and fictively it's a long trade and we go for um, um, finally for that equity, it's telling you you do not l lose money, but you do not earn money as well. What does it mean? There is no statistical edge for that specific formation. It looks a little bit better if we would take the trade longer. Let's go 
down the road here, uh, let's for example, uh, four days, then at least we have that green line here, which goes south, which is in this case okay, because everything, if we find something which goes strictly south, then it's all, um, only telling us we should open short trade and uh, then we have that statistical edge and if the line would go north then it's telling you you should go long after the occurrence of such a pattern but it doesn't look really that good here and that means that kind of pattern is maybe not the best to be traded um, um, in future as well at least what we know in the past, at least for the past, the last 18 years, it did not work. And therefore, I would not go for that formation. I can tune it a little bit, like going here for higher numbers for the threshold. Then it looks like this one here. But the statistic is getting more and more pure. Uh, so now I have only 32 examples. So indeed, now I would draw the conclusion to say <clears throat> there is a statistical edge or at least there's an edge maybe not statistically because um, we have only 30 examples in the past that is 18 years <clears throat> that means we have two times such a formation within a year so it's not the best statistic the equity which goes south here is okay because that would tell you okay we should go short after the occurrence of such a pattern so that's a way how you can deal exactly with those kind of formations let's try another one because then you see how it works let's go for the morning star the morning star once again <clears throat> is exactly the opposite i take all those numbers and I do the rearrangement by inserting them here. And you see, now we have the opposite um, candlestick formation, more called morning star. We take our rearranged numbers here and copy them into the Excel sheet. Okay, then we go here. We have now 28 times um, we set the correlation threshold such an example so we need a lower number for the threshold and now it looks a little bit better here let me tune this to until i see something like about um, 200 examples in the past or maybe the other one was a little bit clear okay let's go for this one here and now let's go through the colored lines here once again so we have close to 200 examples in the historical data um, with a similar pattern to our master pattern um, called evening star and okay if we go through the equities here you see after one day once again, there is no real statistical edge because that summing up all the trades after the occurrence of that pattern uh, is more or less flat. But the longer we go with that trade, if we take the trade a couple of days, then the statistical edge is more and more obvious here because we have equities which go north. And what does it tell you? It tells you that after the occurrence <clears throat> of such a pattern, it's a good idea to go long. That's indeed, in this case, the textbook opinion, um, whereas the previous example, which is also out of textbook and uh, should be a, a short trade, just uh, from the opinion of uh, textbooks, um, but there was no statistical edge. Here we find it. But we have to keep that trade a couple of days <clears throat> and then it's okay. And that's exactly how to go on with all those kind of formations. And then we can draw our conclusions. You find my conclusions already here in the first line. 
and uh, let's go back here to the evening star <clears throat> therefore um, there's a no because i don't see any edge and uh, for the morning star yes i see an edge uh, but only if you go for at least six days let's go for um, a few other examples uh, maybe one um, one example uh, with the three white um, soldiers well, now let's go for the three black crows because that was in, the, in my example page already. We take them, we copy them here, and then we get <clears throat> the definition and the graph, and uh, we can check. Yes, that's okay. And we take the master pattern and put it here once again. And you see, okay, that is a pattern. Uh, but now we have uh, too many matches uh, of 700, so we need a higher threshold here in order to <clears throat> um, get the results right. And indeed, we may find a correlation, um, a, a good threshold. And you see, after three candles in a row which go short so meaning south on short term the next coming days the one two and three days the price goes up so you may call it reversal um, or counter uh, movement anyhow i don't care about the naming what i learn here is whenever i have those three candles in a row for the next one two three days the price have has a tendency to move up and not down as in my introduction um, sheet in that case the price went down yes but that was only one example looking for 160 examples then we know no the bias or statistical edge is going long after the occurrence of those three candles let me go for one example which um, um, which is uh, maybe more tricky and that you see it works also for uh, for two candle formations so let me take one example here so i put those numbers here and then I can copy my master um, into the two candle formations, which is here. And then we have this one here. Okay. Oh, that was uh, already uh, the same, which uh, was in the slide here. And we have already a threshold um, chosen in a way that we have about 200 examples in our 18 years history. And of course, we can see we have an edge, but maybe not in the way you would have expected. One would expect something going south, but in the majority, we can prove here, or we can calculate and derive that if you wait a couple of days, then you have an edge, but that one goes long. So we can draw the conclusion, hey, if you have a pattern like this one, and I always forgot some of those names, um, then it's a good idea to go long. And let me check the textbook um, of that one. It was, um, which one was it? It was this one, Doji star minus. Textbook opinion is short, <laughs> but what we find here, we we can clearly draw the conclusion it's better to go long and wait for nine days. So that's how everything works and how we can draw any conclusions um, about those formations. What you can do is with that kind of Excel, Excel sheet, you might exchange all um, the inputs like, like uh, the prices. You may go for other underlines, you go for ducks, you go for gold, <clears throat> whatever you put in the first um, couple of columns then you can investigate even smaller time periods like uh, h1 <clears throat> or h4 i would not go further down the road but um, 
uh, something like that is a good idea as well. And the good thing is if you go, <clears throat> for example, for H1, uh, then immediately you get more statistics uh, because uh, then you have more historical data, not only for 5,000 candles, then you might have 80,000 candles, <clears throat> which is definitely a, a better statistic. And that's how you can do it. You might go for existing formations, like I put already here into uh, the formation chart here, or you might even create your own. And you might even do something uh, which you may think is strange, but you can even do something uh, like the following. Let me jump to the very end of the table and think <clears throat> the table ends at the 14th of February 2018. And let's think we would sit at midnight um, in front of our computer and we see the last close here, the 1.2455. And we ask ourselves, is that formation something we should trade? And then the question, how? Answer, we take those three candles we put those three candles as being a pattern. So we can put the numbers here. And that's how those three candles, the last three, one have been at um, 14th of February, 2018. And okay, up to now we might change the threshold here because we have only 25 uh, candles. So I would go down um, with that one here and say, okay, um, now we are in, in the order of uh, 200 once again, which is um, of course something like a good statistic. And what do we see with that graph? Hmm, I don't get a clear conclusion, meaning maybe that one is not the best to go for a trade after that specific pattern. The good thing is, we do the investigation on the base of the last three candles of our current history. And we do the comparison with all the candles of our total history of 18 years. And if you can see something which has a real statistical edge, then we might open a trade for exactly that specific condition or specific formation. So my personal conclusions in general, you see, sometimes they are in line with the textbook meaning, sometimes they are simply the opposite, like the first one, the hammer here, and you see other examples where I cannot prove anything, so that's the one with, with the nose. Um, sometimes I can confirm what's written in textbook, and sometimes it's simply the opposite. But you might do your own investigations with your own data and your own formations. Um, and uh, I offer, of course, to have those uh, this Excel sheet in order to do everything by your own. So that's already my summary here. So candlestick patterns are indeed suitable to identify good traits. But please do not blindly believe whatever you find in any textbook. Do it by your own, because only the statistic you do by your own, um, I think then you can you have a better feeling with that. Uh, just reading, this is about bullish formation. I go along and uh, later blame the author of the textbook. No, that's not the way I, how I look for trading. I do it um, by my own, and then I have my own statistic um, for, for that specific purpose. And you need to do it for every underlying because they don't behave the same that I can tell you. And that Excel sheet here is, I think, a good framework or toolbox in order to come to your own conclusions. You see my email address once again. So uh, if you want to have that Excel sheet on the slides, no problem, uh, just send me an email. And let me, before I come really to my end, let me already announce the next two webinars in March uh, from my end, because uh, there's a highlight. Um, I can tell you that's on the 
22nd of March. Uh, that is a professional basket strategy I want to introduce and give you um, a real look behind the scene because that is something totally new at JFT Brokers that you can follow, that you can have within your own um, account. And what's all behind and how we do everything, I will tell you in that uh, specific webinar. So it's really the professional way of uh, doing a portfolio and, um, and that you know what kind of strategies are, are traded within that basket or within that portfolio. You will realize there are several out of the webinars of uh, the last uh, 10 months and uh, those find their way into that uh, portfolio. That's the one, 22nd of uh, March, same time. And the other one is I want to show you in the next webinar, uh, so that's uh, two weeks earlier, I want to show you another way of how to derive a trading strategy, but now purely mathematical driven. So it's not around back testing or testing like here today. No, we do it purely mathematically. And uh, that's indeed something maybe weird or maybe strange, but it works. And you will see what I have done and how to do that uh, in that webinar uh, trading strategy purely derived out of mass. That's uh, the other one. Okay, that's for today. I hope you enjoyed those webinars. See you hopefully again in March at both of those webinars. Um, you will find them already on JFD webpage um, and later you will definitely will get an email with those as well. You find the recordings from tomorrow onwards on the J YouTube channel. Yeah, that's from now. Um, I wish you um, a yeah, good evening and see you next time. Bye-bye.